There we go. It's not good morning. <laughs> it's good afternoon. And good afternoon. I would like to greet you in the name of the Lord. I guess let me put my glasses on. Let me put my glasses on. I do have a word. I do have a word. I have a word. And then on my way to work. Oh yeah, that's better. Than, that's better. That's better. That's better. How y'all doing? Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Uh, today, my message, uh, briefly, is going to be about, it's going to be concerning the power of suggestion. Suggestion. Suggestion is being given an idea to be suggested to do a certain thing. It's almost like what I see is almost like uh, if, you, if those that watch football, um, when the quarterback is in the game, or certain players, they have like a uh, headphone or whatever in the ear, earpiece in the ear. And what happens, the coach or the guys from up, up in the box will tell the quarterback what to do, what play to run, do this play, do that play. So in other words, and I know it's a game and whatnot, but I'm using it for an example. So basically almost like he don't have his own mind. They don't trust him. They don't trust him enough. So the uh, the coordinator or the coach or whatever or based on what they see in the game or whatever but in that case they control the quarterback so in other words they tell the quarterback what to do what not to do do this do that do this do that so the, the the quarterback basically don't control don't call his own plays don't make no decisions on his own and so that's just in the natural what i see in the spirit this is what the the adversary and the devil is doing the wicked one is doing with many of um, you God's people, it's almost like he has an earpiece in you and where he's suggesting and telling you to do this, telling you to do that, say that, act this way, don't act that way. Almost like a puppet master that's controlling you. And so that's what I see. And my premises is coming from a Matthew, uh, the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter, where it talks about seed time and house, where it talks about where the good man planted these good seeds. But when he went to sleep, the enemy came in, he slipped in. And he sold tears there. And so what's happened is that when, where many of God's people are asleep, meaning having doubt, disbelief, discouragement, uh, frustrations, and are not being focused, but, but the impact of what's going on, they're being captivated. You have been captivated by the impact of the pressure and the bills and the things that you're facing. And so you're asleep. You're asleep. You're numb to your circumstances. And in that place where you're numb to your circumstances, what the enemy is doing, he's planting. That's what I was that's what I've been seeing as well is planting. The adversary is planting seeds. He's planting tares. The Bible says when the enemy went, uh, when the good man went to sleep, the enemy came in, slipped in and sowed tares. He sowed tares and so that's what he's doing. He's sowing tares and those tares are the power of suggestion. Those tears are, are things that you don't think about that are negative. And he's trying to brainwash you, but also the wicked one, through pressure, through pain, he's trying to uh, uh, control you. Like a puppet master, get you to do this, get you to do that, get you to worry about this, get you to worry about that. Get you to be afraid of this, get you to be afraid of that. And you're so focused on the fear that you, you forget about the faith. And so this is what I see is that, this is what I see, the power suggestion where uh, the enemy through being asleep, through being under pressure, um, through trials and tribulations, and through just getting tired from the test, he's causing that, he's using that to loathe you to sleep. And when you're asleep, he's coming in, he's planting. He's planting seeds. He's planting seeds of discouragement. He's planting seeds of discord. He's, it's almost like a bug to, a bug or leaving something, leaving evidence. It's almost like sometimes, you know how to, some of those, those are dirty cops where they investigate a house or they investigate a car to check for for uh, concubine, uh, contraceptives, not contraceptives, but uh, but drugs, and but then they plant things to set them up, and so this is what the adversary is trying to do too. He's trying to set you up by planting certain things in your house. So that's why it's important not to invite strangers or people that you don't know into your house, because uh, you don't know what they're bringing into your house, what kind of spirits, or what they're leaving, or what they're planting in your house, what kind of seeds. And also influence that planting, the suggestion is an influence. It's an influence of thought, a thought pattern, uh, a way of perceiving things, the way that they do things, the way that um, 
they see things. So that's what it is. It's, it's like a, brain, a, a brainwashing thing where he's trying to control your thoughts. He's trying to control actually your, your movements, your actions, your ways, almost like the horse with the bit and the bridle where wherever way you turn the head of the horse, the body will go. And so he's after your head. He's after your brain. He's after your mind. And he's strategically trying to loathe you and to plant, keep planting, keep planting, because there's come, there's going to come a harvest time. And the Bible says, even in that particular 13th chapter, says that one particular uh, grounds that seeds fell on, one fell among thieves, one fell, uh, one fell among thorns, one fell by the wayside. But it says that one fell, um, fell down, but because it was there wasn't much earth buried underneath it that particular seed sprung up fast and in it sprang up fast it was exposed in the sun when the sun came out it scorched it and killed it that particular one with a dirt it, it, it wasn't buried under too much dirt or enough dirt that's covering some of you uh, God wants you to become covered God wants you to become covered with his word to become covered with his anointing to become covered with his glory his covering his feathers you have to be covered. You have to get deep in the word. And the deeper you get in the word, that'll be that'll be your protection. Your depthness in the word will determine how your fruit, how your fruit will grow up and how it will be pre uh, protected from the elements. Because the word will be there. The word will be there. The Bible said they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. When you become weak uh, in your weary place or when you feel weary, strength is going to spring up as a river because you've been planted in the house of God and the Bible said those who are planted in this house shall flourish in his courts and so my my, my, my word is to be beware of the the power of um, the power of influence the power of the enemy the power of suggestion it's a suggestive thought where certain words are spoken that you never heard before, but the purpose of speaking those words or speaking certain things is to get you to think about it, get you to meditate on it, to get you to have a thought cycle, a thought process along those lines. See, but the Bible said we're not ignorant concerning Satan devices. God bless you. I'm gone. Have a good day. Hi. How'd you match that? Yolo scoop. Gazai mas. Sumasin. God bless you.